Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. This video I'm going to show you how to do a stamp concrete walkway. And it's going to be an astro slate. And what it's going to look like is in the end it's going to look like something like this. This is going to be what the finished product looks like. So if you want to learn how to do stamp concrete, this is going to be the video to watch. I'm going to show you how we form this this uh, walkway up, how we pour it, and how we stamp it. And that's going to be what the final product looks like. So this customer, I've done a lot of work for this customer, and we're just, we, we've done all the concrete work here, and he wanted a stamp concrete walkway to go from the entry of his house to his driveway. And he wanted us to put styrofoam under it. He just, the styrofoam is just to help ensure that frost doesn't get under this and heave it. Since we live in Maine, we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. So we do install a lot of styrofoam under a lot of our exterior projects like this. So we're getting the forms up. This is gonna have some curves to it. It's, it's not a huge walkway. It's about 30 feet long and about five feet wide with a curve there that goes into the building. So the, the easiest way to do this for us is get the styrofoam down first, especially when there's curves, and then put the forms on top of the styrofoam. Rather than try to put the styrofoam in after and cut the styrofoam, cut the curves in the styrofoam and fit it in, it's so much easier just to put the styrofoam down first. So we're getting the forms down. We use a one by four AZAC trim boards. They're like PVC trim boards to do our curved forms. And those work really nice. They're rigid, but they have a lot of flexibility to them. So we really like those for our curved forms. And then for the straight forms, we'll just use regular two by fours on this one. So you can see Darren and Luke are getting that first form started and you know you always have to find a starting point so what we did was we found the center of that door there to the house that black door and then transferred that straight out to where the walkway was going to be and then we measured from that center mark over two and a half feet to the right two and a half feet to the left and that marked where our forms were going to start there up against the the entryway so we get that pinned in place and then we just curve it around and then the ending point over there where Luke is on the right by the driveway we had a mark over there so far from the garage that the homeowner wanted us to to stop the walkway at so we had the end point and we have the beginning point and then it's just up to us to make it look nice and the same on this side here so when we whenever we do curve forms you know a lot of it is just trying to keep everything looking uniform and keeping it the same width and you know you just got to take a bunch of measurements once you get your first form up and, and in place then the second form is just basically measuring off the first to make everything look nice and uniform the straight areas want to be nice and straight and the curved areas just want to have a nice even flex to them so they both look the same as you're walking you know down the walkway when it's all done and then we'll let the landscapers take care of the rest so we're just finishing up putting the last pieces of styrofoam in we're gonna get the laser out and we'll shoot our grades with the laser to set everything to grade we'll slope this walkway away from the house kinda of towards that wire mesh you see laying there on the ground but before we do all that, we got to finish up forming this, get, get all the pins in place, and get it to where we need it. And probably the forming on, on a walkway like this is, for us, I mean, probably takes more time than pouring and stamping. So, I mean, how, how many of you guys want to learn how to stamp concrete out there? I mean, we, we stamp a lot of concrete. It's a big part of our business. It's also a big part of our, of our uh, income so we, we do a lot of this I've got a course that I actually teach you guys how to do this down there in the description it's called my stamp concrete course so if you want to learn how to stamp concrete if you want to make it a part of your business then I would highly recommend taking that course I I go through you know from where to get the materials how to start stamping where to start when to start um, the whole process the the finishing, the sawing, the sealing. So you get to learn 
how to actually do this stuff. I mean, we all have to start somewhere. I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. And I had a friend of mine that did stamp concrete and he asked us to help him pour once. So we went and helped him pour this, this project. And then we stuck around and helped him stamp it. And that's how I got introduced to it. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing either when I first started. So we all have to start somewhere, no matter what we're doing and learn from somebody and I, I made that course to help introduce you guys to stamp concrete so you can make real good money at it when you get good at it and you, you all got to start somewhere so we're getting that piece measured off the building and we're going to start setting our forms to grade here real quick Luke's finishing up the final touches on getting the form up getting that last one piece up the homeowner wanted that last piece right in a certain spot so when he paves his driveway, you know, the pavement will match up right even with the edge of that garage and everything will look nice to him. So that's where we're putting that last piece. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I've got my laser out. My top, I use that Topcon RLH5B. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've seen that in a bunch of them. And I'm going by that garage floor. So that garage floor top of that garage floor is going to determine my my uh, stamp concrete walkway height we want the walkway a little bit lower than the garage floor so when he paves his driveway everything's going to slope away from the garage and it's also going to slope away from the walkway so water doesn't run onto the walkway so we'll use that as our benchmark over there get that form in place screwed in place first and then we'll put a little slope on it away from the garage and that's how we're going to set the rest of the walkway too we'll get that back form set and then we'll set this front form make sure there's slope to everything so we got the forms all set we got the wire mesh all in and now it's time to pour this thing we use a 4000 3 8 p-stone mix when we pour this we also put fiber mesh in the concrete so we got the wire reinforcement that I'm pulling up and then we got fiber mesh in the concrete so there's like a double reinforcement that's pretty standard for most our stamp concrete pours we'll either have the wire mesh in it or we'll have a matter rebar in it one or the other Luke's magging the edges as we pour it and he's getting those edges all smoothed out so we can screed right off those top of those forms You can see he's just screeding his way down using the top of the form as his grade. Pretty pretty easy to pour something like this when you have the forms all set to grade. That's the easy part. And uh, you know we mag those edges to push the rocks down, get some of the cream and the paste up on the surface. That just gives us something to go by when we screed, but it also makes it easier to finish. You know, when if them rocks are just down below the surface and you have some paste there to work with it makes the finishing process easier also this didn't take too much concrete it was about it was about three to three and a half yards of concrete in this thing so that's not too bad our concrete up here in Maine for four thousand it's about hundred and fifteen to hundred and twenty dollars a yard so the overall cost for the concrete's not too bad for something like this Yeah, we're finishing up. As soon as we get that finish greeted, I'm going to grab that bow float right there as you see sitting in front of you. And I'll bow float. And the bow float is doing the same thing pretty much as the mag did on the edges. It's pushing down the rocks, bringing up the cream and the paste. And that's what we're going to stamp the concrete is that paste on the surface. We don't really want to be stamping the stone. Um, that just makes it a little harder to stamp so you want that little bit of paste at the surface to get your finish stamp mark in so that's it we got it all poured as simple as that now now here we are this was probably about an hour later after the pour you know it's it's about 60 70 degrees out it's in the Sun so we had to let the concrete set up a little bit and now what we're doing is we're just edging it we're getting putting an edger mark around rounding the edges and we're not going to leave the finished edger mark. We just want those rounded edges to help strengthen the edge a little bit. So this is the first process, first part of, of doing the stamp concrete. 
is just rounding the edges off a little bit with it with the edger and then the next part will be we're gonna we're gonna mag the surface out we call it magging i don't what do you guys call that we're, we're gonna have our mag and we'll we'll just mag out any of the bull float marks we'll fill in any tiny little imperfections in the surface you can see right there luke's got what's called the darby uh, Darren's got his his mag. They're basically the same thing, just one's longer than the other. I, I have a Darby there, about a 30 inch. Those things are about 30 inches long. And again, we're just magging the surface out, bringing up more cream, bringing up more paste, and preparing the surface for the stamping process. If we couldn't reach this from the outside, then we we'd have a we have a tool where we can have like a mag like that on a handle where we can push that out there and, and reach it from the outside. And if not, if it's even bigger than that, then we have what's called these concrete skids. And you can check those out. I have, you can see me using those in some of the other videos I've done. So this process right here, the timing of this is, you know, we can, we can press our fingers into the concrete maybe about three-eighths of an inch or so and that's it the concrete's that firm and that's about where you want it when you start stamping something like this you don't want to start when it's too wet or you'll create a bunch of divots in the concrete with the stamps by stepping on them and you obviously don't want to start when it's too firm or you just won't get the impression from the stamping so we get it magged out and now i'm throwing the release agent on it and again, this is all in that stamp concrete course. I break it right down step by step. I slow it right down for you. So we're putting the release agent on it. And the release is to do a couple things. It's going to keep the stamps from sticking to that paste on the surface. And it's also going to add a secondary color like an antiquing type finish to the surface when we get this done, washed, and sealed. So Darren's setting that first stamp. The, we're using Ashler Slate here today. And the way he sets that first stamp is the way all the other stamps are going to go too. This particular stamp has a notch in one of the corners. And that notch has to go the same way every time you put the stamp down. And you can't curve these stamps around this curve. So we're going to have to keep them going the same way and just offset them as we go around the curve. We got we also have these special shoes we wear, these really the flat shoes, rubber shoes that we can step right into with our boots or our sneakers. And those shoes, those really flat sole shoes, they keep you from leaving like a heel mark down in the concrete if uh, if you got heels from boots and you're you're stepping on those stamp mats and it's a little soft in a spot you know you could really push the concrete down right through the stamp and leave a little divot in the concrete so these flat shoes I'll have a link for those down in the description if you want to check them out they really help keep the surface nice and nice and flat and level as you're stamping we're just using our weight for this we we do have these tampers that you can tamp the stamps with but the, the timing of this for us was really good. So all we needed to do was use the weight from our bodies to get the impression from the stamp in there. So you just, it's just a process, guys. You just go one stamp at a time, stamp it, pick it up, move it ahead, go back, tamp the next stamp, pick it up, move it ahead. It's just like almost putting a puzzle together. They all fit together a certain way. You know, depending on what pattern you're using, um, that kind of depends too a little bit on how they fit together. But this pattern's pretty easy once you get going with it. It's got those nice handles you can lift the stamps up with. I'll have all, all these tools that you see us using are down in the description, guys, if you want to check them out, you know. And if you want to see more of the stamping process, I'll have I'll have some videos linked right at the end of this one so you can check those uh, stamping videos out also and those will have some of those will have where we actually come back the next day and I'll show you how we 
we saw expansion joints in something like this and then how we wash it and then how we seal it I mean that's how we finish these projects up um, I'm not going to show you on this one because I have it uh, all that on those other ones you can check those other ones out to see that so this is how we stamp uh, Ashler slate concrete walkway you know how we for it, form it how we pour it how we stamp it this is the process um, sometimes we can do all that in one day and sometimes we'll come one day and get the, all the forming and all the prep work done and then we'll pour it and stamp it the next day Luke's using a little touch-up tool there to touch up any of the, the marks from the stamp that that may not look perfect so we're, we're making them all look perfect all the grooves and this is what it's going to look like when we're done guys this is the Ashler slate stamp and check out my other videos you see on the screen right now to learn a little bit more about stamping. Thanks a lot.